right, welcome back to my art table. In this tutorial, I'm going to use a medium called Absorbent Ground, which helps create sort of a washy watercolor effect on acrylic paintings. And I'm going to do this in layers. This has been prepped with a coat of titanium white, dried, and an extremely thin coat of the Absorbent Ground, very thin. I'm gonna put on some metallic gold just playing around with this. Using a very light, lightly damp sponge. There's not very much water on this at all. You kind of just wash this around. I just want this in the background. And I don't want full on across the painting gold. I want just bits and pieces. And the acrylic, or I mean the absorbent ground, is grabbing some of this paint, as you can see, in a very interesting way. Because I put that very light coat on, and I didn't do a full-on coat. I, there's pieces of the canvas that I didn't cover. I just put a very thin coat on, and what didn't cover, I just left that. Let it dry, and then I'm rubbing this on. And as you can see, the gold is just picking up in certain areas, and that's giving us a real pretty background. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to put on some more absorbent ground and layer some more color on top of that. All right, welcome back. So this is dry. As you can see, it's kind of got a real washy background effect with the metallic gold that I used. Now I'm going to take a little more of my absorbent ground here on a knife and I'm going to drop this into an, just an abstract pattern on this. Kind of move it around in different areas. This is going to be a layered painting where Instead of putting all the texture down at one time, we're putting it down in layers. And then just do whatever you want to do. Take some of that off of the brush. That's going to give us just a little bit of a softer effect. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let that dry now, and then we'll come back and we'll put a different color on top of that. Hello there, welcome back to my art table. Next section of this, where we laid down the gold metallic, and then we laid down some absorbent ground in a sort of abstract pattern. What I'm going to do now is, since this creates a real watercolory effect, this is good and dry, several days. So I'm I'm cool with just misting my my canvas. If it wasn't fully dry, at least 48 hours, 24 hours, I would not miss that. I would add water elsewhere and apply it that way. Um, I'm going to use a basic mop, some water on it. And my palette, my teeny tiny little palette here, since we're doing a small painting, has a phthalo blue. This is a metallic blue-green, and this is a phthalo turquoise. You can use whatever colors you like, of course. I'm also going to grab a little sponge because I think I'm going to end up using that. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little blue-green and phthalo mixed on my palette, real pretty. And start in a corner here. The absorbent ground is going to grab bits and pieces of your color that you lay down. So I'm going over this with an incredibly light touch. My sponge is damp, the little color on it. 
And then what you can do, if you like, you can mist for more of a run, which I, a watercolory type look. Remove some paint if it got too concentrated. And then go back in. And the absorbent ground is mostly where this color is picking up. So now I'm going to drop in a little bit of that phthalo turquoise. Very intense. And I'm that's a, a high flow liquid acrylic, so that's why it's got such an intense washy look there. That is one of my absolute favorites to work with. I love that. Then I'm going to spray a little, remove a little. Sometimes you don't know you like something until you you know, remove it or manipulate it and you think, oh no, I liked it the way it was. So you have to go back and add color. This I'm going to just blot down just a little. And again, this is grabbing on most of that absorbent ground. A little bit on the gold background and you can go in and kind of Remove that if you like. If you don't want it on the background so much. And lay it down. This is a way to do a textured layered painting using that particular medium. So next I'm going to put in the phthalo on its own. Just 100% blue. Lay it down in a couple of spots. And often... One one tip I will give you, if you're not really sure about a color and you you want to introduce it but you're not really sure if you do or not, just put it in a tiny little corner and work it in and see, oh yeah, that looks great or no, that's a, that's a bad choice. It's so much easier to fix a little corner of your painting than it is to plop it right in the middle, right in the center point and, you know, then realize, oh, I, I don't like that. Why did I do that? And have to fix the center point of your painting. You know, fixing a, a an edge is so much easier. I really do like that blue, so I'm glad I brought that in. Part of creating a painting that you like, that's that's pretty, that's pleasing to the eye, is color choice. I tend to find if you use less colors and you just mix them well within each other, you're going to get a really pleasing, pretty final effect, a little more sophisticated. You know, some artists, they do like to use you know, several different colors. Um, often those will compete within a painting, and I, I personally am not a big fan of that. kind of makes my my head hurt <laughs> but um, some some people do it very well very successfully so it's just not my thing I like to use a few colors and mix them to get varying tones so that's why you see I only have a few colors here with the gold background and I'm using those to get you know essentially Kind of the same tone of color, just in different ranges. Some has a little more blue, some a little more green. And that is my point with that. That's a little more green there. And I'm layering this all with just this damp sponge. I find this works particularly well versus brushes on uh, using this type of technique. It's first of all, it doesn't grab into the canvas like a brush does, it lays flat. And if you use it with an incredibly light hand, like I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, laying it down, you can control what you put down, and that is really the key with this type of painting just controlling 
what you're putting down. So this is kind of where we are now. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay down a little more gold on top. And I want to let this dry a bit before I decide what I'm doing. So that's kind of where we are now. there welcome back okay this has dried a bit uh, I'm gonna go ahead and at this point you could apply a little more absorbent ground on top of this and then do another layer if I was going to create a really complex high-end painting I would probably do that but at this point I just want to show you that um, this is dry and absorbent dry ground paint tends to dry quickly versus like a glaze or something so you can work fairly well uh, of course I wouldn't want to spray this canvas right now but I am okay with adding some more paint so these are the three golds I have this is just a Liquitex basic gold uh, this is a really nice um, this is Blick Iridescent Gold, and I also have a Golden Iridescent Bronze. And I'm going to use the three of these. Sorry, I needed to get another palette. And lay down some gold on top. That's going to bring out from the background. Not exactly sure which one I'm going to like, so I'm going to lay down a little bit of each one and see, and probably do a little bit of a mix. So again, I'm using my sponge, it's still a little damp. The other side here, I'm just going to pick up a little color. I'm going to start with the bronze. Again, when I talked about the last section, I'm going to put a little in my corner here and see where I'm at. I'm liking that. So I'm going to lay down a little of that for some depth. When you're using metallics, they can get a bit one note. So it's really nice to use a couple different types. Like what I'm saying is a, a really iridescent bronze, gold, a, a deeper. Uh, golden yellow gold those can bring out a lot more sophistication than just gold sometimes you want that but sometimes if you want to create a little more depth having a few different types of metallics can help all right and that does give me some pretty depth I still have my blues here have it fully dried. I'm going to pick up a little on top here and just do a little layering over this. Again, working with the absorbent ground gives you that sort of watercolor washy effect in the background. Doesn't really matter if the paint moves around a lot because it's kind of what you want with this. If you really were working on a large canvas that was something you wanted to make sure it was 100% what you wanted, I would fully let these layers dry in between versus trying to work on them, you know, within the same day, which is what I'm doing. But I want to just show you the technique and the effects that you can build up. So again with this, pick up a little more gold of the Liquitex Basics Gold, applying a corner. Yes, I like that. I'm going to bring that up. That is my little cheat that I do. I apply in the corner, determine do I like it. Yes, I do. It's coming into the, the focus of the painting. I'm working with such small amounts here. I'm laying with a fully flat I'm not digging into the canvas. I'm just fully flat, lightly going over this. I'm 
And now I'm going to pick up my most iridescent gold color. I'm going to drop a little bit over here. This is pretty bright. It's really a beautiful top top gold. Like when you've laid down everything and you just you want to really highlight the uh, and the one I'm talking about, it's this Blick Iridescent Gold. I'm sure other brands have that as well. Um, but this one in particular I really like to really bring out that gold highlight. I'm going to lay down just a little more blue here in the center section with the... Uh, the phthalo and the high flow acrylic mix. Just a little. Don't want it muddy. It's a little bare. And then back to my gold bronze. Again, layering, removing, moving. That's sort of the beauty of this style of painting. Sometimes it's pretty to take a color and just kind of rim your painting with it, even if it's just in a couple sections really brings out that color without adding a lot of the color into the actual painting. So I'm going to finesse this a bit and then put a pretty coat of glaze on it. Working with absorbent grounds are, ten, are kind of dry and chalky, so you definitely would want to glaze uh, over this and then, you know, varnish it if it's a, a nice archival quality painting. But that's where we're at.